Good morning, traders, and welcome to the Pro Trader webinar series for Thursday at 10 a.m. Uh, today we have Scott Pulsini, a futures trader. Uh, he actually uh, trades uh, every week with us uh, in the advanced uh, education webinars that uh, you get as a Global Plus subscriber. Okay, so uh, we had J Trader uh, on Monday, but he he's usually usually on Wednesday. Um, just to give you guys a, a feel for our education when you subscribe to, to Global Plus, uh, these are daily, uh, every weekday. So it goes for about an hour, uh, we, three days a week, it's all forward-looking education. Uh, three days a week, we read the live market and give insight to where price is going to go. And then two days a week, we have uh, Scott and Jay Trader trading live. Uh, so it's a complete education that you guys get. Uh, and today, you're going to get a taste of what Scott does uh, um, every every Thursday, right? So that, that's going to be the uh, Pro Trader webinar for this morning. Good morning, everybody. Um, you you guys can see uh, the screen and and hear me uh, correctly. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. So let's get into uh, some of the, uh, the the introduction here, and then just turn it right over to Scott. If you guys haven't heard about Scott. Uh, let me read through this. Haven't done it in a while. Uh, Scott's been trading for over 20 years. During the years of 2002 to 2005, Scott was responsible for trading about 10% of the S&P E-mini futures volume. Uh, pretty incredible stat there. Uh, I can't even imagine the the, the nerves that uh, uh, Scott must have. Um, you know, you could be a, a soldier, a fighter pilot, a, a bomb diffuser. Um, or an e-mini trader trading that kind of volume. I, I think it's all kind of in the same realm. Um, uh, anyway, now Scott focuses on trading both equities and futures. He's an expert scalper and has innate ability to quickly read the order flow and volume within the price patterns. Uh, contact information is all here. His website, his email, his Twitter handle, his trading room, wetradedesk.com, and an educational course that he offers. Um, uh, it's on the bookmap marketplace. Uh, and uh, and there's also a special link here um, I will put into the chat for you guys as well. So it's, I'm going to put all of this into the chat. You don't have to copy this down. You, it'll it'll link right, right from uh, uh, the chat. So you can just click on it. Uh, so need to go through some disclosures and let's turn it right over to Scott. General disclosure, all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading is in simulation, demo paper trading mode, and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. Risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right. Uh, uh, Nicholas, if you can, everyone else can see the screen, correct? Uh, if not, Nick, Nicholas, so you log out and log back in would probably be the way to go. All right. Can, can everyone see the screen here? No. Okay. Let me, let me, let me try it again. Oh boy. Okay. So sorry about the logging out, logging back in. Um, Anyway, uh, so yeah, just uh, going through this here with Scott, uh, the um, uh, first slide, his bio here, uh, and then all his contact information, and then we went through the disclosures uh, right here. Okay, so uh, anyway, uh, that's it, um, and sorry about that. Let me turn it right over to Scott and let him take it away. Thank you, Ice. Can you hear me, Bruce? Yes. Yeah. All right. Not, uh, seeing the normal control panel. Can't bring this over for some reason. One second. There we go. <clears throat> oh, this thing is so touchy. Um, all right. So let's do this first. Okay. Yeah, I see you're uh, you're looking at the you're looking at gold. Correct. Okay. I'll share my 
webcam to so you can see my awesome screens. Um, all right, so <clears throat> things are getting real interesting here, right? When we're getting on, of course, there's like 50 Thank you, Ice. firing off right now. Um, I just got short gold literally a minute before we got on here. Um, so quickly, in a vacuum, I'm just going to show you this stuff first, and I'll show you why I was already leaning short for gold. Um, <clears throat> we had a, um, see these big buy icebergs here. I highlighted that with my, um, so this is one of my five setups. I have a course out there for you newer listeners, um, watchers, uh, that really highlights this SI indicator, stop iceberg indicator, which is the most powerful thing I've ever seen in futures trading, which shows you where the big money's playing, where the dumb money's playing. And you, uh, I have five distinct setups that I trade off of solely, exclusively. Um, in important areas that I deem important. Um, so we'll get into that here in a second. But this fired off, this iceberg. Um, so basically paper was trying to stop the move down right here and it had broken through. And let me show you here. One of my, one of the best setups here is when a market breaks through the zone, retests, then fails. So you can see it's exactly where I got in. We broke down through the zone. We retested here. As soon as I started seeing the red bubbles come in, meaning the market selling, I got in right here. And now, now I'm in the trade. I just covered, uh, I put four on, I covered a quarter down here. You can see where I covered it. Um, and I'll show you that reason here in a second. Uh, <clears throat> equities quickly are in a crucial area where they just sell. Thank you, Ice. Um, we'll draw this zone actually right now. This was threshold for ES. Yeah, so again, in my course, I give thresholds for all the different futures markets. Uh, depending on which one you trade, you will know which icebergs are meaningful, which ones are not, which stop runs are meaningful, which ones are not. So um, this was almost 800. Actually, I saw 800 here at the peak somewhere, 811. Um, sell iceberg here that looks like broken ice right now, right? So uh, meaning paper stepped up. You can see all this buying here, and they were trying to hold it down with their hidden iceberg orders, and it just pierced right back through it. So this is kind of the opposite setup I just took in the gold. If I would have taken this one, so we're going to draw this zone. I want to uh, color code it because it's it'll be easier once we start drawing stuff to know which one's which. If we have some, um, what am I doing here? We have like stop runs and stuff. So uh, again, this is pretty archaic. I've been on Bookmap to fix this, but they've got bigger things on their plate right now. So I'm not complaining about a drawing tool when I have all the other awesome sauce. So I will bite through doing this it's it's on the list <laughs> i mean it, it's been bumped up the list i should say well i only complain every single time so but again <laughs> I, I will fight through that for all the awesomeness that i get from bookmap i will put up with the, the drawing tools right now and q stops all right, so now we're we're trying to pierce back through this so this is more of a this might be a delay broken ice you can see the spot gamma um spot gamma level here not broken ice, but a uh, Titanic setup and try to poke out. This is crucial area with the spot gamma. We'll get into all this stuff too. I know newer listeners are probably like, what are you talking about? I want to see if this holds, which it looks like it's going to. If this breaks below, I will wait for a retest fail just because you have to be more conservative you, with your shorts and equities because they never go down. And when they do go down, they bungee jump, V bottom every single time. Every time, as you see right here. It just, it's just, you can set your watch to it. Um, and Q, Russell, <clears throat> see everything's firing off here at one time. It's nice of them to wait till the webinar started. Um, so my thresholds in that in NASDAQ, it's usually around 120 lately. It's been higher just because I've been seeing bigger volume come through here. So you can see here, this one was 160, 177. This one was one, almost 150. So I'd say 150 is a good threshold for um, the icebergs today. Stop run so far, we've had 130 stop run here and then 145 stop run here. So I would say over close to 150 is probably the threshold for both today that is reliable. Um, again, we'll try to get into this stuff. For, I know there's newer peeps on here that have no idea what I'm talking about, but we'll get into it. It's just stuff's firing off here pretty quick. Um, so let's see here. Trying to, I didn't get a chance. I was had my gold trade on. Actually, let me take a look at gold real quick just to see where we're at. So anyway, this is a very important zone right now. If you are bullish, this is not, you know, you would go long on the break of the zone to the upside. Your stop goes below here. 
and you can carry it up. I'm not bullish right here. I'm not either way right now. I want to see what happens at this huge spot gamma level. It's 3,900 is a very big level. It's also a big level on the charts I'm going to show you. And we're facing a, a basically a, a failed breakout to the upside this morning, um, which I'll show you here quickly. Right, so we broke above this um, overnight balance. I can get this stuff off here. We had overnight balance here. We tried to break out. Tried to hold the top of it, no, and then right through the high volume node, which is the where the most trade occurred in the balance area, that is negative, right? So um, on the bigger picture, <clears throat> I was very uh, bearish the other day. I caught this down move um, when we broke down from this. We talked about it. In my, I'm in the We Trade Desk room. I do a uh, film in the three days a week as well, doing live trading like I'm doing here. We talked about this there where we broke down below this um, balance area. We retested the bottom, then we failed, we gapped lower. This was this huge move down. When we retested this value area, you do not want to start this balance area. You do not want to see it, um, in most cases, violate. If this was going to remain bearish at the time, like yesterday, I wanted to see it hold this zone, which was confluent with the um, high volume node of this balance area, right? That's the last stand for bearish usually. We got above there, so I was thinking, okay, as soon as we move a little higher, we we built balance at the end of the day yesterday, right? This little balance area here. Um, and I was expecting that. Now the exact opposite's happening. We're back below the high volume note of this, this uh, balance area. There's really nothing structure wise until we get down here. So again, it's still a little sketchy on which way we're gonna go. I will, if we break this 3,900 level, um, I will be leaning short just because they had the chance to push this higher and it's now failed. This balance area has failed. There's not a lot of structure down until this little guy here. And again, the bigger balance area that we broke down from is, is, is pretty much holding, right? So I couldn't see this thing turning around too. So we're going to keep a close eye on it. Um, again, you can see it's struggling here. Um, this is a very important area and that's why it's kind of bouncing back and forth. Again, it won't surprise me in the least to see this thing go like this because that's what it always does. But if we do break the zone, you're going to see stop runs, you're going to see um, icebergs and so on and so forth because this is a very important spot gamma level. Um, I'll talk about that in a couple of seconds. Um, I have no affiliation with them except for using their stuff, which is incredible. Um, it's basically dealers that are, um, these are just showing you where the highest concentration of options on the SPX, the cash index, um, which is obviously the uh, futures are derived from, and it's showing you where the options dealers have to hedge, your, hedge their positions, right? So that's very important because you know they're going to be, you know they're going to be um, um, in the market in these areas hedging their position. So it's not a guess. This is not like a support level guessing that the, the options dealers are going to be buying here. It's, it's, it's a guarantee, right? Because they have to hedge their positions. And the bigger the bigger the area, um, based on these, you can see here if I bring this down more. So these are all the real important areas. So if you don't have spot gamma and you're trading ES, you're doing yourself a disservice. You're really doing yourself a disservice if you're not using book map and the SI indicator. But this is... Um, very important. These are very important levels here. So for instance, if we break here, the next move is probably down to zero gamma. If we get below zero gamma, then we're going on. Again, yeah, you can just, do this website. Just a, a, quick, a quick note on that. Like, uh, So uh, Brent Kachuva from Spot Gamma presented on Tuesday and he's going to present tomorrow uh, at 10 a.m. So uh, there, guys, you can go to the YouTube channel, our, our YouTube channel at Bookmap and uh, you can see his recording from Tuesday. So if you want to kind of uh, find out more uh, all about that. Right, it, it gets very, very technical. Um, I use it in the most basic sense and that's how I like to trade. I keep it, what do they call it, KISS, keep it simple, stupid, right? I've always traded like that because then I don't confuse myself. I don't have 50 different indicators on my chart, which I highly recommend you don't either. You keep it simple and it helps clear your mind and you don't have conflicting views on, on market action and can't afraid to pull the trigger because one thing's telling you long, another thing's telling you short. Um, so as far as the spot gamma levels, we have them for NQ and Russell as well. You can see here, so the volatility trigger, once we get below that and you can see that's where it held. When we, this is a big level where meaning it's triggering, triggering volatility based on this option stuff. Again, you go to his website, read all about it. It gets very technical. Uh, it's really cool, but it gets very technical. The, the, the point is we're below this support was, is now resistance, just like anything else in trading, right? If once you break it, it was support till it wasn't, now it's resistance, right? So unless we can get back above here meaningfully and hold, 
I'm going to be looking short in NASDAQ as well. Same reasons. Um, short term two, you can see we built a balance area overnight. Um, we had one here, and we wish we had one here too. We broke down from, but this is basically one big one. We tried to break out, no dice. Should have held high volume, no this one right through it, and now we're struggling. I foresee that uh, it's going to be my call. That's my thesis for the day. So the way I trade, and why again, everything I, I do, I'd recommend you guys do the same. That's why you're on these webinars to learn from my 20 plus years of experience and getting my head handed to me at certain times, right? That there's no reason for you guys to go through the pain, learn from my mistakes and, you know, apply them to your trading, your playbooks and your, and your, so I mean this. And your thesis stuff. So, um, I was just going to show you guys. Oh, uh, so this quickly, this looks much more bearish than ES. Remember we were looking at ES. Yes, we had the balance and we were up here and it, it broke through the high volume node. And I thought we do this. This is this never even got close to this balance area that we broke down from, right? So NASDAQ looks a lot more bearish. Um, <clears throat> so I'm I'm way more inclined to put a short on the NASDAQ right now than ES. So this is very important too. So we know we're under the vol trigger, which is bearish in itself, right? Um, and then on this this balance area from Tuesday is very important, right? So we broke down, we gapped down, we broke down, we went all the way down here. Um, it's completely with other stuff over here I'll show you, but now we're returning to what? The top of the balance, right? That's the first stand for bulls. If they so mean this. Bulls, so I mean stuff's firing off here. Um, if bulls want to hold this, this is, an area, this is an area would happen. The last stand for bulls would be the high volume node of this balance area. If we get through that, then it's going much lower in, in my opinion, in my experience, I should say. Um, but we're holding right now. So again, I don't, and this is another, this is what I was getting at before. You as a trader, you want to, let me turn this down a little bit. Um, you, you, know, you want to try to pick a direction for the day based on what you know about trading um, and stay um, with that thesis, you know, until proven otherwise, right? So meaning, you don't try to catch every move both ways. It's just, it's almost impossible, especially with the algos in here, which sign you to death, right? If you're a click trader, your, your best odds of success is, is coming up with the thesis, kind of like I just outlined for you guys in the equities, and then looking for setups in that direction, setups with the SI indicator, or else you look at, you can be looking at, you know, your moving averages, whatever. But the biggest fallacy of traders is, the, the FOMO, the fear of missing out, right? Trying to catch every move back and forth. And it's just, it's not going to happen. So just do yourself a favor, pick a direction, and you pick an area that shouldn't be violated if your thesis is correct. Then if the area is violated, then you can start looking the other way. But what I'm saying is don't be trying to catch moves both ways because it's, unless you're algo, unless you're a computer or can write programs, it's, um, it's going to be virtually impossible for you in my experience. All right, gold's coming back to that zone. This is what gold does if you miss, um, if you missed that first short, you know, if you're, again, I, I don't, I don't recommend you mirror my trading that the idea of these webinars is not to mirror me trading is to learn to trade these setups for yourself. Right. So, but if you are many times, this, this is what gold does, right. It breaks down, it'll retest. If it fails again, then you can take the short ears, um, goes in the same spot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add just that quarter I got out of before, which was a perfect area that I got out of. I'm now going to add that in, and I now you see my four last stop up here, right? So, again, the first time this thing broke quickly, it broke down briefly, retested right here, and then went. That's where I got short. Actually, I'm sorry, that was over here. My bad. That's the wrong zone. Hold on a second here. Sorry about that. This zone here broke down, retested. I got short there. Now we came all the way back here. You can see right back to the bottom of the zone. It's not a coincidence that it's holding, right? This was that huge, that wasn't huge, but it was a big iceberg that got smoked. They lost, came back here, now rejected. So that's why I added, stop goes right here. This other zone is from earlier. I, got, I should delete that just because it was, a, uh, it was a stop and hold that actually are dumb and dumber. Actually, I'll just show you this here real quick. So this is why this area is very important. And we'll even get into this stuff too. This is the new indicator that they, um, there's a beta out can have Bruce if it slows down I'll have Bruce explain some of this stuff because I need help with it too because I just put it on my on my uh, book map but earlier you can see here this is this yellow zone here this little zone here you see this big stop run 
with uh, almost 300 contracts. So usually we call this setup, uh, it's called a dumb and dumber. So usually stop runs are the dumb money, the retail trader. Don't be offended, I'm a retail trader too. The point is we are not as informed as the big money, right? So that's why I call it the dumb and dumber. Usually stop runs are when they don't hold, they immediately reject and you can see the zone there. That was this, it would immediately rejected, gone right? There was no real selling behind this move. It was just a retail trader puke. You don't want to be a part of that if it doesn't hold it and then keep going lower. And at the time, it didn't, right? And we moved up. So if you were looking long, you could have caught a nice long there. This was, you know, 50, 60 points straight up. Ran into some icebergs up here. We'll get into this a few a little bit. Um, and you can see it held when it came back again, kind of like the retest fail, like we're talking about right now with icebergs. Came back, it held, went back higher, went higher. And then when we came back down here, that's when this um, new iceberg fired off. This is where I drew this. Broke ice. Sure this is, that was this, right? Broke down, now we retested, now we're failing again, right? So again, I apologize for newer newer peeps that are watching this. It's, it's I'm throwing a lot at you, but, just trying to show you these setups. Um, <clears throat> so we I, I wouldn't wouldn't worry about it. I mean, uh, we'll get to the questions, but uh, I mean, this is what Scott does uh, every Thursday, uh, he and um, uh, just keep keep going with it, Scott. Okay. Um, so the people that you know have the course and have been watching these webinars, they know exactly what I'm talking about. So again, the more webinars you watch, the more you'll get from it. Again, the idea here is to teach you guys how to trade for yourself, to be self sufficient. You know, so you can eventually become a professional trader and work for yourself and never have to work for the man again. That's that's the, that's the goal in trading, right? There's nothing better than working for yourself, not having to answer to anybody but yourself and the markets. All right, so you can see here we're having a hard time in NASDAQ holding above this important level. So now, based on everything I just showed you, the only thing we didn't look at is the, uh, the other stuff that I look at is TAS. This is actually gold. We'll get into this stuff too um, and what I saw there. But in the NQ, another reason why I'm, no, leaning, I'm leaning short here is, so the TAS boxes are basically mini market profiles. The ones I concentrate on are on 30 and mini and the 60. Again, I, TAS is part of the WeTrade desk. I'm affiliated with that. I have, if you go to my website, you get you will get discounts, scottpulsinitrader.com. Click on the banner, you, will, you can get discounts for the TAS indicators that I use. Um, but this is the stuff here that I'm showing you, right? So these are mini market profiles. You can see values moving down. This is one. All this is is these are this is the resistance, point of control, support, right? So when markets start breaking down out of the longer term, I like that's a great short, right? So you're breaking down out of the 30. We built a new one here, a smaller one. We're breaking down out of the 60. Values moving lower. Values moving lower. Then on the regular market profile, which most people are familiar with. Um, again, TAS is just mini market profile, so this is the daily. The blue are just days that are merged that I draw a composite profile, they call it, right? Let me turn the color here. So this is telling, right? So this is this composite from back here. I kept it up. Usually when you trade through it a bunch of times, you can delete it, but this one was still showing effective. Um, like here, um, it held the low here. So yesterday, this was yesterday's close here. So I would have expected this, this closed inside this value area. It should have held and gone higher. What happened is we touched yesterday's, um, again, this is just like a task box, right? Resistance, point of control, support. We touched the high yesterday. And now we're getting below the composite and we're here right now. When you get this, the tendency is usually to travel the, up to the next composite. Um, that was way back here, but you can see it's still relevant and it's gonna be confluent with the point of control from the day before. Neuralize. This was Tuesday's trade. Here's the high, point of control, low. So the tendency when we break out of composites is to go to the next one. So I'm looking at this as the main, um, my main target. If I do get short, this is all pre, you know, I look at all this stuff pre-market. So I know when the stuff starts firing off in the SI indicator, I know which way I wanna trade and I know where my targets are. And you can see there that that market profile level is also confluent with, this is TAS market map. It shows you where the most volume uh, traded in this picture here. And that is exactly confluent. Most you see where the volume came all the way out. That's the most volume confluent with 13,000. So if we do start to really rip down um, everything combined, I showed you the bar charts, how we had the fail breakout. I showed you we're below the spot gamma level. If I start getting serious signals now in my SI indicator, one of my five setups, then I'm going to go short. And my first 
and you can see here's another spot gamma level not coincidental this is going to be my first target that i'm going to be looking for you know if i get short and that's 150 points away so that will be a very nice trade if i if this uh materializes like i think it will gold this is exactly what i was talking about you see these patterns over and over and over and over these these levels based on the si indicator you can see came up exactly touched the bottom of it failed we we just added there boom this is you know now we're um 60 plus ticks in my favor so now i want to watch how this reacts right i got out here the first time why did i get out the first time because this is an important level and profile so the first time i came down there before um i don't think we were on i can't remember now if i was talking about that but what we just talked about here right so this was a composite this is another huge composite we'll get into that now we're testing the bottom of this one and the top of this one if this fails again i will get out of another quarter if we rip down through here i will add to my trade and the tendency is to go to the other side this composite is all the way from last june Right now, I'm sorry, wrong one. Absorption. You can see there, right? This is June. This was a multi day composite, and, it, and it's still important. The last time, and I actually posted, you guys can uh, follow me on Twitter as well. This day, this is actually built, uh, this is multiple days, but we caught this long. I posted it on Twitter. This was last Thursday. We tried to accept in this composite. Right here was like, um, like, 2,000 icebergs, I can't remember the exact number, and it was the perfect spot, and we broke out of here, I knew it was go time, and then we rallied all the way up here, right? So using important areas in your trading, and again, you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing, but even if you like, hold on a second, even if you use a 200-day moving average or moving averages or Fibonacci, it doesn't matter when you add that stuff into, um, with real-time volume, that makes you a lethal trader, right? You, you're more informed than 99% of the traders. Let's see what ES is doing here. These are very, very important levels. You can see it's about to bust through this ice here from earlier. So even if you took that trade, this is freezing up on me in a second here. Even if you took this long, it's still this still is worth 10 points, right? Now we're breaking That's below. You can see the ice is coming in again. So paper is trying to defend this area. And if it moves a little lower, they're going to get smoked. And that's what I want to see. Now anti-paper. I used to be the I used to be paper, <laughs> the big trader. Now I'm the retail guy, so now I'm always loving it when they get crushed, um, and that's what's happening right here, right? So you see this? They're fighting. They're still fighting right here, but I mean, what I'm saying is, if this moves lower, it's going to get ugly. <clears throat> so let's uh, draw this zone. You can see now we're at almost a thousand icebergs here, hidden orders, right? You can see this heavy market selling. We'll get into this. This shows you some of the exact areas where the icebergs were executed um the most so my thresholds for i don't even get in the shed let me i don't want to confuse people more than already confused let's draw this zone first and then we'll get into the new indicator um, hopefully this will slow down but i don't think it's going to so you can see this started let's see threshold started right around here this is going to get a little confusing too because i'm going to have the same color um all the way down to that covered about right there right so what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to make this one big iceberg area <clears throat> so people aren't confused. So I'm going to erase this one and this one. And now we're going to use this entire area. Yeah, this is a big area. I mean, it's only, actually, it's only six points, but it's incorporating what? Two different icebergs. You can see here, right? You had big cell ice earlier, right here, 800. That was, that's only just, this is the top of that. And then now you have this big iceberg here. So this is this is all that all this combined. This zone is hugely important, right? It's hugely a word. I'm not sure. So we want to see what what I want to see now. First of all, we're below this. That's a big spot gamma level. If you read his commentary, uh, I'll just show you this here quickly. This is what you get with the, you get the levels with spot gamma, and then you also get the um, he has awesome commentary. He's almost spot on every day with the with the range and everything. So you can see here. Um, he says the 3,900 level is still really important. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Here we go. Well, he says it closed, but again, it's still a big level, right? Quick retest of 3,800. So you can, again, you can read this stuff on the site. 
um, but it's incredible how accurate he is calling the range for the day, calling like yesterday on Tuesday, he said, if we break uh, 30, 38 or 39.50, it was going to be a straight shot to 3,900. And it was literally a straight shot to 3,900. It was, it was like, it was a free fall. Whoever traded that day and was trying to get long, learned that the hard way. But if you knew the spot gamma stuff, you probably would have stayed out of the way. That's the whole point. But anyway, what I want to see now is I want to see this break. So you can trade this one of two ways, right? When this area breaks, you can be aggressive and get in immediately, or you can wait for what? What we've just been talking about in gold, breakdown, retest, failure, then you get in again there and the stock goes up there, right? That's the conservative entry. The problem with this pattern is sometimes you don't get that return, right? Especially if it's a very important level, it may just free fall straight down. Um, usually in equities, you can be more conservative trying to sell because the thing is just constantly bid, constantly bid. All it is is ice by iceberg trying to hold it up. So if this does break, what I'm going to do, because this is still in a, in a kind of a hairy area where I'm not completely convicted on the short side, um, I will wait for a break, a material break. I want to see at least four or five points below. I want to see a retest. Then I want to see sellers come back in and sell and sell up. Why does that? Why does that pattern occur? Well, think about it in common sense terms, right? Think about it if you're this big, say this is one big trader, right? And the reason my five setups that my course is based off is based off, they're not hypothetical setups. It's based off how I used to trade as a large trader, how I used to see big other big traders trade, right? And how they would react in certain areas. So pretend you're this big trader, right? And you take all this selling, you absorb all the selling, you're the iceberg. This thing breaks, this was me. I was like literally holding my breath, praying, literally praying to God some days when it would do this, I'd say, just please come back. Just come back to my area. I will just scratch a trade. I promise I won't be greedy. I will just let, let it come back. So that's exactly what happens. Most time when paper's wrong, they have the ability to even push it back. They'll start to buy down here, right? They'll start to buy, 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 and it'll start a little cascading effect. It'll move right into their orders. So they'll place their sell orders back that they just were long on. They'll, they'll put them in here. And when it comes back in here, they'll start to get out. So here we go. We're starting to break. And then they'll start to get out of the trade, which, which moves the market lower. So this is it. Right? Here we go. Look at the ice is fearless. Now look at this iceberg. 2,000 icebergs. This is the most we've ever had on this. Uh, just like the second most I've ever seen. Um, <laughs> it's the most we've ever had on the uh, webcast. I can tell you that. So hopefully this thing doesn't freeze on me. Um, rhythmic doesn't keep up a lot of times. So again, this trumps the other one, right? So this is this is another important area. This is even this is again hugely is that a word? We're gonna draw this one in. That stuff right there. Is. It's still coming in. So you can see how paper is just you know it they look 20 this is huge 2400. I'm telling you guys whatever way this way break this thing breaks we're going to get a a, a a serious move. So this is kind of cool that it's happened with you guys. You can see it started to dissipate here. So I'm just waiting for this to finish to see where I'm going to draw the bottom of the zone. Then it's going to, this is going to get very interesting on this webcast. Um, there you go. So you can see it dissipated down to four, only 400. Considering my threshold 700, this is, you know, three Thank times, you, more than three times normal. Let's see what happens here. This is going to be very, very interesting now. So you see now this entire area is just all icebergs, most of it buying, right? So this is a 10 point area now. Again, if you're gonna trade it, you don't have to risk. So say you do get short, you don't have to risk up to here. You wanna risk the top of this one, which was right around right around here, right around 38.92. Again, this is gonna get very interesting. I'm gonna be aggressive here if this right now, just because I know these guys are in some serious trouble, right? So my stop's gonna go right above here. If I get stopped out, I will, which is a very high occurrence trying to be short these markets, but um, I will re-enter. That's part of my trade plan, part of my playbook. So again, this is the exact scenario what we're talking about. Paper does not go down without a fight. They just, they're invested 2,400 icebergs. They will get it back to this area to possibly start to cover and them covering their lungs causes the next move down, right? That's the pattern. And that's what's happening right here. We're already in, so, but if you miss that one, again, this was a four, remember I said four or five points away, retested, didn't quite get up there. I wouldn't be surprised to see it try one more time. Again, paper does not like this, 
Who do you think this is by? It's probably these guys getting it back here so they can get out of there long. They're like, oh crap, we were wrong in that area. Now let's peel out and that causes the next wave down. So we'll see. S&P ice. Again, I'm not holding my breath on the short because it's so hard to short this market, but there's so many things in my favor now that I'm willing to give this a shot. And if I get stopped out, I will try it one more time, right? So if I do that, if it stops me and it comes down again, I'll short it one more time. All right, so the, the one I really wanted to short was NASDAQ and I'm sure I missed the, all the, uh, so you can see here, these are these are big icebergs too. Everything, everyone, all this, all this uh, big houses, the papers trying to hold this thing up. If they are wrong, it is going to get ugly in a hurry. So you see here, 200 icebergs, that's all this selling right into hidden orders, right? Let's draw this zone here quickly. That started right around here. You can see where it starts to spike, right? And you go up to those bubbles, right? That incorporated this whole move down and it stopped right about well that was the low of that move was over here so that's the zone hopefully the market holds waits for me to, to draw my to draw my zones and color them for you that'd be very nice of the market to do that let's do this so you guys can see how i draw the zones too so um in my course i use the i was using the exponential because they didn't have this uh um I'll show you here in a second. So you can see here when you go to the iceberg, again, I appreciate the market waiting for me to show you guys this. Um, you can use all these different, some just showed you for the day, that does not help me as a short-term trader. Um, exponential, reset, um, you can set it to, to reset. There's, I think there's still some bugs in there, so you wanna use sliding. Again, you can read all about this on the bookmap wiki page. I was using exponential on my course, I switched to sliding, because sliding just helps you define the areas a little better like this where you get the spike and then done and you can draw your zones, right? So this is a big zone for NASDAQ where I should have been short was up there near that ball trigger that we were talking about. I should be concentrating more short on this market because like I said, it looks way more bearish than ES, but it is what it is. But what I will do here is I wanna see this thing move away. Again, same pattern all the time, right? I wanna see it move away like it is. I'd like to see it a little further. But then I want to see a retest, then a fail, then I will go short NASDAQ as well. All based on the same premise, right? And all it's all based on my experience as a large trader and how I used to respond. When I would have three con 3,000 contracts on, that's how I would respond, right? So I, I know how what paper does because, again, they have to, if they're wrong, they have to cover their trades. And again, and then I, I'll get emails like, well, you don't know what this, uh, one, before I get into that, the, these guys are not going to go down without a fight. So you can expect if you are short, you're going to see, you know, boom, 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 until they finally have to give it up. So hopefully I don't get stopped here. It's not going to surprise me at all. Like you're about to see, it's probably going to be right to the tick. Let's see. That's my MO. That's my curse. There you go. Right to the tick. Let's, let's see what happens here. And you ice. So again, I, I'm not surprised at all that this is happening, right? So they, my, my rule is now I'm going to reenter this trade. Again, so many times they will do this, they get this to their area, right? They took their stand, they moved against them, came back, started moving against again, they push it back. And now they're probably, a lot of these, this iceberg is probably starting to cover here. So if this moves back out of this zone, I'm gonna reshort it, stop goes in the exact same spot. If I get stopped out again, then I'm done shorting this for this area right now. Um, but you can see the games that they play, right? You just have to be mentally ready to re-enter your trade. You can't one time, so this is part of my trading um, playbooks per se, right? So I already know there's a very good likelihood, especially with this kind of size, that they're gonna rip this back into the zone and play games in here so they can get out of their, their trade that they were wrong on. Um, but I automatically know there's a good chance I get stopped out and I'm gonna get back in one more time, right? And I'll play this zone one more time. So let's see what happens there. And you can see here, I'm not kidding you, this is my curse for making millions of dollars at one time in the E-mini S&P. I mean, it, it is uncanny how often I get stopped out to the tick. I should have been a little higher here. I should have put my stop a little higher above the zone, uh, but I just thought that was enough iceberg if they were wrong, that it, was just, it wasn't gonna come back up here, but how wrong I was. So I won't re-enter this, it comes back here. 
let's take a look at gold. What's going on here? All right, so probably should pay attention to my open positions. Um, so let's take a quick look at the where we're at here. So you can see here, we're really if this starts, I was going to get out of here before all that stuff just happened in the ES. If this struggles here again, I'm going to get out of a quarter. Probably, I'm probably going to get out of a half because it has a chance to break into the zone. Now, if I get something in gold, I would love, I will add to the trade and I will trail my stop from my original um, trade. So what does that mean? Let's take a look here first with the sizes. So there's nothing threshold yet, right? I want to see at least over 150 today in gold um, like these, right? So this was what we got in over here. So what I mean is, so I'm already preparing for this, right? If this starts to move higher, I'm going to get out of half and wait. But if this starts to move lower and I get another bearish setup on my SI indicator, right? That's threshold. This is not threshold, right? That's not even 100. Um, so say I get like a, a stop stop run and it holds, I will, re, I will enter a new trade on that. And then I'm going to carry my stop that's way up here down to the top of this new setup, right? So now I have two positions on but they're independent, right? So this is how, when you catch a trading, uh, trending move, um, when you get SI indicator after SI indicator after SI indicator set up, you can trail your stop and you can have a, that's, that's you're gonna have five, six, seven positions on, all independent, all based on structure where you're stopping out and you catch a trending move and you have a month, year making day. That's the whole goal of trading, right? You know, there's this, I just had a mentoring session before this uh, webinar and I was talking to, the guy and you know I explained to him you know so many traders think trading Thank is you, it's like a regular job where you have to make um you have to we're gonna keep an eye on that uh you have to make money every day you're not gonna make money every day it's not a consistent profession right the goal is oh you can see here too ice. how'd you like that ice. there you go stop to the tick but I re-entered but it still had to take this on the chin now it's time to puke guys this is what we were waiting for right I mean, this is a, this happens over and over and over and over. You're this trader. Again, this may even retest it one more time. I'll even add to this now because these guys are screwed. Pardon my language, right? 2,000 contracts. How did that taste? Thought they, they got it back in their zone. Stopped me out. They, they started getting out of their longs, and that moves it down again. And now this thing's in trouble, right? This is to a T. Every market, same exact thing. Every futures market is the same pattern, right? If you know, this is why I say it every single time. If you are trading off a bar chart, you have absolutely no idea what is going on in this area. Don't you think you want to know if 2,000 contracts tried to stop the market and they're wrong? Isn't that important? It's the most important thing you could possibly have in your trading, guys, I'm telling you, guys and girls. And you can see, look at this pattern. I was... I've done this on the, on the webinars before. I don't know what I'm doing. I keep putting my stop a tick above the zone. Just go a couple more ticks and then I'm in this trade from up here. It's just upsetting. But anyway, this is getting ugly. So I'll keep an eye on this. Now, here we go. Here's another 1300 icebergs. Now this provides me, if this holds, I can get out of my trade and I'll make a little profit. If this breaks, I'm gonna put on a brand new trade, trail my stop down, right? Let's. I'm going to shut up here for a second and draw this on so you can see what I'm talking about. You can see there is some major paper taking a stand here. And if they are wrong, it's going to be fun to watch. So I'm going to trail my stop now to here. I'm going to go a little bit above. I'm going to be smart on this one. So I'm like a, some days I'm like a monkey, uh, keeps sticking his finger in an electrical socket, thinking the next time it won't hurt. I keep putting my stops right above, a tick above the zone like a moron. So this one I moved a little higher. So if this breaks, I'm being aggressive because why? I know what happened over here. There's still guys caught from over there. This, this is huge ice. I will add to it. If I get stopped out, I'm, that's fine. I'm still going to watch this area. But this is what I'm talking about. If this turns into a trending move, say this zone holds for me. I get in my next position. Now I'm stop, I, I, I stop, I'll get into another position. I'll have two positions on. And my stop for both goes above this latest setup. So let's see here. I'm like, oh, there you go. And Q ice. There you go. And Q ice. That's what's so funny about this. You can just really watch how they literally have control of the market, right? So this big money, they can spike it up like that. But that's fine, right? I, I made a little bit back that I lost on that stop out. And that's fine. This zone helped, right? 
This is exactly why this is so important. If you're trading off bar charts, do you know, and one, ice. this failed, two, that ice came in again right here and it held, right? That's why I trailed my stop. I got out where I should have. Now I'm gonna watch this. Where did it hold when it popped up? The bottom of this zone. I could have added on that one, but I'm gonna wait. If this breaks here, I'm in. I'm gonna get back in. Again, it doesn't usually do it that drastically. This is just a screw you day for some reason. Paper's just, they're so aggressive. Yeah, some vol weird volatility today. You just see that. I mean, let's just swipe it up five points and then we'll continue yeah. puking in our position. It's just, but that's fine. That's why you guys just saw. So there, there's obviously always the chance this thing goes all the way back up here, right? I didn't have to carry that all the way back up here. I based my stop, I trailed my stop, not based on P&L, based on structure. So I knew when this iceberg formed, it should not violate the top of this ice or I was out, right? It held, I didn't enter a new position because it never violated to the downside. I will if it does, but I got out. Now I just sit here and wait. It's not a big deal. Sit here and wait like a sniper, you wait for your setups. If this trades 81.50 or 81.75, I'm in again, and my stop will go the same exact spot or spot. What's gold doing? Um, yeah, I'm about to get I gotta put Jay on my other one too because this is getting interesting here. Again, this is aggressive. Uh, you could wait for it to break. And Q ice. So there you go. They got me again twice. You saw you saw them get me with this. I'm not so mad about this one because I had it above the zone, but you can see they'll play the games, but they still have to puke, right? So you could have been really aggressive and, and put your stop, kept your stop way up here. Um, I probably should have just because this iceberg was so big. This is one of the biggest I've ever seen. I should have just kept it up here, but these guys are in big trouble and it's going to be real fun to watch them puke out 4,000 contracts. So now again, if you didn't get short there, what's the pattern? Break down through the zone, retest, hold. You start to see the red come in, market selling, you get in, stop goes right here. Let me put that stop in too. So I'm not going to put my stop and way up here again. I'm going to, in my mind, based on my experience trading these SI indicator setups, I put it in the same exact spot. And if it comes back again, that's fine. It should not is the point, right? If it comes back, then it does, it is what it is. And I should be, whoops, I just, yeah, I did. One second. This is the one I want to be sure. Did I just miss? Yeah, monster. Here we go. This actually might be a chance to get in here, though. See here, this zone here, huge sell ice, 422. Let me get stopped out of the ES trade again. Should just be concentrated on NASDAQ. Because that's the, but I can't help myself. When I see that much ice in the ass, I have to trust the ice. So let's see if this zone holds now. So again, we move a little bit below, retesting. If this gets back out, I'm shorting it. I'm not doing it yet, right? This could blow, but if I was short here, my stop would be right here above the zone, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to short into this position. I'm going to go right there. If this blows above here, breaks above, that's a bullish signal. I'm not bullish this market, so I'm not going to take it. But what is that going to run into? This other zone right here, right? So let's see what happens here. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to be aggressive on this. I'm going to short up here because this was the zone. Remember I said once it broke, I was going to wait for a retest. Well, there's the retest. So now my stop for that one is going to go up here. Right? I know what I'm getting into because I just basically got short on a violation of this one, which was this zone here, but it held. Now, if I get filled on this, I'm going to drag this stop down to here, which is confluent with the top of this zone, what I just drew, and then I'll have two positions on. And if I catch a trending move, it's going to be a, a monster day, right? Especially because I'm short ES2, I think. I may have got stopped out. Let's check. It wouldn't surprise me. I hate that market. I like gold and NASDAQ much better. Did they stop me out again? They sure did. <laughs> All right, so let's let this materialize. I'm going to concentrate on NASDAQ because it's just, yes, they just, it's amazing what they can pull off in there. All you need to know is they're in trouble, right? This this paper, they may be able to flip it up. You know, I'm, being, I'm being very conservative with my stops right now because I don't want to 
you know, I don't want to watch this thing rip all the way back up to uh, 3,900. But, you know, if this thing materially breaks again, so I'm going to get, again, what's my rules? I get in twice. So I will get in again down here. I'll give it one more chance. Stop will go in the same exact spot. Let's see what happens here. Gold, keep, keep losing track of that market. I mean, that's my profit. That's my gold. Where's gold at? Where's my gold? Oh, that's why, because it's above my head. Sorry, guys. All right, you can see we're struggling in this area, so I'm going to get out of half. This is what I was talking about, this market profile area. We're having a hard time puncturing into this, right? And that's fine. I get out of half. See how we're just, like, hanging right here? But if I start getting SI, bearish SI indicator setups in, into this, I will, add, I will go full size again. And then if I keep getting in, I'll just keep adding because the tendency once you accept back into the to the value area, market profile value areas, is to go to the other side. So that's the target if we get moving lower in gold. So covered half. Um, I'm still going to keep my uh, unless I see I will get out of the full trade if I see a bullish SI indicator setup, real time volume. Otherwise, we talk about this all the time on these webinars, right? Most traders start to panic when it moves against them, and it means nothing, right? It's just algo's screwing with you. What matters is it doesn't violate important areas like here. Again, if I get a bullish setup, I'll get out. But if not, they can play games for the next three hours. I don't care, right? Because it's not a meaningful area. Let's change that to two. So then that. Did I just get stopped out of NASDAQ? No. Close. Again, I knew what I was getting into here because this, my stops up here, I was aggressive because I'm more bearish, but this trumps this, right? This was only like 180, this was 400. And remember I said, I know we were above this, but I still wanted to give this a shot. So I knew what I was getting into here. Um, I'm gonna draw this zone too, so it's thicker. <clears throat> Again, hopefully people are following along. I, I wanted originally to, re, to, to trade a retest of this zone. I'm probably going to get stopped out of this now. Again, because this is more important than what I drew this first zone on, which was this, right? This was 200, 214. This one was 420. That's more size here, and it couldn't get below this zone, right? It popped a little bit below, which NASDAQ does, and then it held. I took a short, basically... This was a bullish setup that I took a short on based on this, right? It got above the zone and I got short here, but I was playing this zone, hopefully hoping we can get back down below. And I'm now going to take a beating in that one too. But again, I, I prefaced it by saying this was a very aggressive trade, which it was. So if I get stopped out of this, then equities are winning right now. And I'll just wait. It's This is still very bearish, right? So I'll just wait for my next setup. Um, let me draw this zone just so we know where that's at. So Scott, um, I see Gene's asking about. Uh, I, I know that you're using buy and sell stops for entering, um, as, as you can see that that four down there below. Um, but uh, if other ways for uh, entering, like uh, uh, market orders or um, limit orders, etc. Um, yeah, I mean, I just, I stop into trades just because I'm talking and I'm, I'll miss stuff, right? Um, you know the area, if you're watching it, you just wait, wait for it. And then, you know, then you can judge, is it going to bust through, right? So if this came down here like this, you can, if you have your finger, finger on the trigger, you just hit, you know, sell market. You can just go to the, go to the market. I put these in the stops just because I'm talking and I'm flipping back between markets. I didn't want to miss if this thing came down and blew through here. I wanted to be in a, add to the trade, right? Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move this a little bit higher just because I'm so sick of getting stopped out to the tech. It just it makes me sick. It happens to me five times a day. And I, I know everyone on here is saying cry me a river because it happens to everybody, but like, I'm not kidding you. It's my curse. Like, I, I, the thing is why it's my curse is I could put it up here and that'll be the high tech. I could put it here. It's the high tech. I could put it right here. It's high tech. It's just gets real annoying. So me talking, this is me talking to myself all day long when I'm 
Let's get stuff to the, to the deck. So you're going to probably see that right here too. But it'll be comedy for everybody. All right. So you know these iceberg areas are really important. It may may play its game right now, but if this gets back below here, I'm going to still take this trade. This is kind of delayed, you know, and it's moved up pretty high. Again, if this gets up here and starts you know settling in up here I'll, I'll delete this and i'll just wait for a brand new setup as of right now i'm hoping this can hold it doesn't look very promising but we'll see that let's uh check out es and see if they moved it back into that huge zone which i'm sure they did because they don't go down without a fight here we go So remember this other, this was the big iceberg, but then we had other ice before this. It was like 1400, I think. So that was this whole zone here. All right, so we're back. I know this is confusing um, just because there's just, there was so much stuff firing off today, right? There's, there's so many zones here. Um, I'm just trying to determine where this one was here to here. Yeah, so I mean, again, this whole area is very important. That doesn't help people right now, but trust me, if this breaks below here, it's it's going to be very. You're going to see. It may hold. If this gets above here and gets back above the spot gamma level, and I start getting setups, I I will consider longs. Right. So right now, my thesis is short. That's different from trading both ways. Right. Trading both ways is trying to catch every move back and forth. I'm telling you, it's not going to happen. If you're trying it, you're just going to drive yourself, you're literally just might as well go check into a loony bin because you you will drive yourself crazy. What I'm saying is when certain areas are violated, my thesis is short right now. I don't want to see, one, I don't even like that it violated this top of this zone here, right? That was this zone earlier. This was the next one. I don't even like it violated that. If we get above this, now we're above all this, all this ice has won, right? And we're above a spot gamma level, I will change my thesis to long. Right? Yes, I was trading both ways, but it's not trading both ways. It's because my my whole outlook of what should happen has changed. Right. Hopefully that makes sense. Is there any questions, by the way, Bruce? I've been talking for a long time. Uh no, I think we've gotten through most of them and I, I've been answering a, a bunch in here as well. Uh let's see. Uh Andrew just came in with a new one. Um when you see that uh, big ice and short, uh, and they hold a level in the ES uh, eight, 883 there, um, why not turn around and get long? Yeah, I, that's what I just explained, because I, based on everything that I'm seeing, right, structure-wise, I don't like the long in these markets right here, right? Again, we failed. I talked about this when we first got on. This is a big balance area. We violated the high volume node yesterday. That's very bullish. We built a balance area. This thing should have done that. It did not. We actually broke down out of this balance, broke down back below this high volume node of this bigger balance. I I am don't want to be long. I want to be long once we get up here, right? Or I'll give it a shot again because of all, all the real time volume I just saw. I, I would, I'm not going to love the long above 3900. Um, but I, I might be aggressive and take it, but I really want to see us get back above this uh, this balance area, high volume node, which will also be back above here. And then I think it's off to the races, right? Right now, I am not bullish. So this is exactly what I just said. I'm not taking both ways, both sides, right? This is how I trade best. This is how I keep my head clear where I'm not having FOMO every move. Like, oh, I missed that big move. Oh, I missed that big move. I have based on what I, what my experience and knowing where we're at in the bar charts, knowing where we're at on market profile, let's say actually, I think we looked at market profile for uh, yes, knowing all this stuff. And again, I know all this stuff pre-market. This is all stuff that you guys need to do before the markets open, just so you have an idea, you know, where we're at. So when this stuff starts hitting the fan, you know how to trade this, right? This is not bullish for Taz either. These are mini market profiles. Well, he's moving lower, 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 we're down below the 30 minute, down below the 60 minute, right? What are we bounce off of? I was just, I can't tell if that's high volume, but this was, you know, you have to, so if I was short from way up here, I do watch prior box areas, important areas. So this is resistance, POC support. So I might, if I was short from way up there and I didn't get stopped out to the tick like I did, I would have probably covered a piece right there, 
um, you know, not buy it, that huge ice aside, right? If I'm just trading the trade, I get out of quarters at important areas. Prior box oh, areas nice. are important areas, right? So this still, my point is, I'm getting on a tangent here, but this is still um, bearish in my opinion. This is market profile. This is still bearish in my opinion, right? We try to get this above this value yesterday. We did this huge move. It, it closed right below it. We tried, we touched it at the open today, right down. Now we're below this. What is the tendency in market profile to go to the next value area, right? Granted, yeah, this one was from before we did trade through it a bunch, but this is pretty confluent with this day. This was Tuesday, you know, the point of control. So I, I am expecting, especially if we get below 82, this is this is my target. We're going at least 20, 30 points, right? So the, all these reasons combined is why I'm not long. So I'm not looking for longs. Yeah, it doesn't mean you're not, you may look at something else that you were long. If that's the case, and yeah, you definitely would be buying down here. If this, you get this buy ice here, that failed, but then they came in again and that were they held it and it's holding right now. So if you are bullish, yeah, you can play off that. I'm not bullish based on my bigger picture structure. So all I do is I wait, I come up with my idea, my thesis for the day, then I wait to see if the real time volume confirms it, right? So nothing is really violated here. Yeah, I lost on these trades, but if this comes back down through here, this paper is going to puke. They're holding it up right now. They may get it above. If they get it above this, these areas, then I will reconsider um, my thesis. As of right now, this thing is still not bullish for all the reasons I showed you. So if this breaks below here, I will re-enter this trade. This is more of a delayed setup. This is, wasn't, this is kind of a variation of one of my five setups in my course. But based on all of this, I know there's almost 4,000 contracts invested in this area from here to here, right? One big zone, basically. If this busts below here, we're going down to that next value or in the market profile, in my in my opinion, in my opinion, in my experience, right? So that's a long answer is why I don't trade both ways. Because listen, I used to be the king of trading both ways. I used to sit here trading this dome depth of market, you know, you know, you know, you know, all day long. I used to average fifty thousand contracts a day, every day, round turns, and that's when the e and S&P was only trading five hundred thousand contracts total for the day. So I was ten percent of the volume. So I'm the king of going back and forth. So if I'm telling you it's almost impossible to try to catch all these moves back and forth, then you probably should listen, right? That's the point of getting on these webinars with me is to learn, not mirror, is to learn from someone that has the experience that I do of taking it, of making millions and also taking it on the chin, right? That's the whole idea. So what I'm trying to explain to you guys is try to come up with an idea. Hey, listen, some days you, you'll come in, like this morning when I looked at it, I was not fully, I even said it at the beginning of the webinar, I was not fully bearish. I'm still not fully bearish like I was, again, I showed you guys um, when we got on, I was fully bearish the other day in the We Trade Desk Room, we talked about this. When we broke down from this, I already talked about this today, right? Broke down, built balance here, then we finally broke. I was I was short overnight, I caught this move overnight. I didn't catch this whole move down, but I was really bearish this day. When we did this, I explained this earlier. We shouldn't have went through this, so I. But then this failed. So now it's kind of back and forth. Some days you're just not going to have a read on the market. There's nothing wrong with that. You can't come in every day expecting you're going to have a clear-cut view. What does that mean? It means you don't trade that market that day. That's what that means, right? I mean, it's that simple. And that's why you want to have multiple markets that you watch, so you're not forcing trades in a market that is just not clear, right? It's just not clear. So. Again, I mean, gold was a perfect example. I was, for months, I was bearish. We broke down here and then we hit this zone here, which was, we've talked about this in prior webinars too. What was that? That was the top of this, right? So I started to change my tune a little bit. That was this big balance that we ripped up from. We tested it once, failed. We came down there. This was check out my Twitter feed from last Thursday night. I had my book map running. I heard gold ice, gold ice, gold ice. I'm like, what is going on? I knew this zone was important. Then I looked and it was like 2,000 buy icebergs or whatever. I can't remember the exact amount, but it was a ton, especially for Globex hours, right? And I, I even said it. I go, this is an extremely important area. Put it on Twitter. Guys saw it real time. There were some guys literally saying, I've never traded gold before, but I'm going to take this trade. And it was a literally a straight 150 tick winner overnight, 
right? So again, you have to you have to have the bigger picture, um, you know, your thesis of what's going on. But my point is, so I was really bearish, really bearish. Then I was really bullish, really bullish after we bounced off that, right? And then the last few days has been back and forth. So I didn't really have a, right? So this up until this short, and I'm still not completely bearish, right? But when we bounced off of this, this was this zone, came up into here, we built this balance, I was expecting it to do one of these. Instead, we broke down, what did we do? We retested, what, the high volume node, and we failed. And now we're back into this zone. So this can go either way. If, if I get a bullish signal, I may take this again to the, to the buy side. If we break through this zone, it's going, we're going down here, right? This is a very, very important zone. So again, you gotta come up with a thesis in some days. So my point, what I was getting at, that was a long talk to tell you that the last few days, I, like in here, I didn't really have an opinion, right? Once we broke down here, I was like, okay, this looks bearish, but I know we bounced off this, which was that huge balance area. So it's like, I, I don't really have strong conviction. I'll have very strong conviction if we break down through here or if we get back above this, right? So the, the whole, the moral of the story is you need to come up with an idea based on your longer term stuff and then come up with your thesis and wait for real time setups to trade your way. This one didn't work out. I was aggressive and that's fine. I knew where I got short at. I mean, it's in NASDAQ too. I'm sure I got stopped up there. Um, I wanted to be aggressive because we were below some important spot gamma levels and I was willing to take that chance, right? So there you have it. Any other questions, Bruce? Yeah, we got a few questions in here. Uh, Jeff is asking, um, how much do you consider the presence or absence of resting liquidity uh, in this trading style? Um, very much so, right? So I'll use that to base my thesis. And again, right on my mining session before I came out, I was discussing this with the guy that, um, you know, we talk about it all the time, heavy liquidity is often a magnet and i don't consider liquidity this so this this is a very good example here right yes this is liquidity I, that's not important to me this could be anything this could be guys trying to scare the market away from here they just throw a big, big order in the order book right this the liquidity that's been in there for hours if not days that's the important liquidity right so you can see here let me look at this you think this is important right? They pulled it here, but now it's coming back in. This is liquidity that I pay attention to. So when I'm kind of with my thesis, I will pull up the liquidity. And I'm going to show you something here too in the um, spies and cues and stuff where, again, I'm sure already short gold and I like it even better because this liquidity is still here. It did pull, but we're coming back. This is still very heavy relatively based on anything else, right? So yes, I see some up here, but Again, we're into that market profile, so I think we'll trade down to this before we would trade up to this. So I'm that just bolsters my short thesis, right? I'm already short that. In the in the ES and NQ, many times you're not going to get clear liquidity. Like this just popped in here. Again, I don't pay attention to that um, as far as basing my thesis. Look, look when you look down here. This has been in here a little longer. It's still not that important, but it's more important than anything else, right? You got that down here which again, if we break this, I will stop into this order because I think this is straight shot here and I think it's a straight shot down to these spot gamma levels. Do not give up on the short here, guys. This is what paper does. They make you think so they can start to peel out. They make you think and then as they really puke, then it's the move down, right? They make you think you're wrong, think you're wrong, you know, especially on the short. It's so hard to be short these markets, but again, I'm still gonna be aggressive if this comes back down here. But anyway, this liquidity is here, but a lot of times you don't see anything in these. So what do you do? What can you do? If you have a DX feed for stocks, again, I don't trade stocks like I used to, because it's just, it's hard enough being in all these trade rooms, you know, going over live trading, watching futures markets, I can't watch stocks as well. But what you use this stuff for is you pull up the liquidity in these, in the, in the tracking stocks and say, where's liquidity? Now tell me if that looks a little different, what does that show you, right? Again, liquidity, People that don't know what they're doing, they look at this and they're like, oh, look at all that support down here, man. Yeah, I'm going to be a buyer. No, that tells me that paper, look how long this has been in here, that the big money wants to get filled. Because remember, if their orders are just sitting here for this amount of time, if anything happens in the world, say, a, you know, a, a plane crashes into a building or whatever, they're risking the market just ripping right through here. 
that tells me they want to get filled, right? That's why this, it's it's just a basically a guarantee we will trade down in here. Doesn't mean we're going to trade down in here today. No, but over the next, my point is when you're basing your thesis, this is going to help you determine which way paper wants this market to go. I mean, look, look at below here. Look at this. Look at below versus above, right? Are we going to trade $20 down today? No, probably not. Could happen. Point is, overall, this is still looking bearish liquidity-wise. Look at the SPY. Pull that up. What does the SPY look like? Not as not as egregious, but it's still, there's really nothing above. I mean, you have these little shadows, but relatively, this is the big liquidity down here. That tells me we can definitely cover $4 today in, in the SPY, right? That would be about 40 points in the S&P, and that's exactly what I'm expecting if we break that uh, 3882 level. Or, yeah, 3882 level, and that's what I'm expecting. So you can expect this liquidity to get filled probably. Then, lastly, take a look at the VIX. VIX is usually inverse of the, of the equities, right? Where's the liquidity at? Liquidity is above. That is, now you can see how you start to form a bigger picture of where you think the market is heading. That's why, on top of everything else I've showed you in the equities, why I'm leaning bearish still, right? I was very bearish the other day. It got I got the move. It did its bungee jump like it always does. But I'm still leaning bearish based on everything I've shown you. Now, you know, paper's fighting, they're fighting tooth and nail to hold this thing up. But, you know, if this thing comes back lower, that I think that's it, right? At least down to the, this area, these areas. Let's so see. Uh, I, go ahead. Oh, uh, a few more questions whenever you're ready. Yeah, ready. Okay, uh, Charles is asking about how you incorporate your Taz River into your trade since you started using it. Yeah, well, I have it up, so I don't, I don't know if it's ready for bookmap yet. Um, again, you can go to the uh, we tra or, uh, TAS Market Profile website, and I don't, I don't think you can, I don't know if you can get a discount on my site through that for that because it's brand new. But I don't even think it's available for bookmap yet. But they have it for other trading platforms like Thinkers or um, TradeStation. I think it's coming out for Thinkorswim. They're eventually going to have it on bookmap. Um, I don't, I keep an eye on it right now. I don't necessarily trade off of it because I haven't, I just haven't seen it enough, it, but you, you can tell it does, does work pretty well. I mean, it's just basically a dynamic value area, right? Kind of like, um, you know, one, one other thing that I will watch, I don't exclusively trade off of it is what so many traders trade off of this and that's fine because it's powerful, especially if you get, right? So say you're trading off VWAP, this is what I'm talking about. You don't look at anything else but VWAP and you like to trade VWAP. Um, if it you know trades in the VWAP, say you say to yourself, okay, if it comes up here, I want to get short. Only if you get the real time setup. So you wait for a move to VWAP, right? Again, this is in a vacuum. If I'm, I'm just assuming some people trade VWAP. You wait for your bearish setup to confirm VWAP. Because again, you guys got to remember, man, you know, the lines on a chart mean nothing unless there's real volume at that area. Real, real volume is what determines the market movement, not lines on a chart, right? So that's why, you know, some days you get test of VWAP and it fails, right? Other days it goes right through. Don't you ever wonder if you're not using bookmap? Well, why did, you know, people just chalk it up because you have to mentally so you don't go crazy. They just chalk, oh, that's just trading percentages. Trading, trading is percentages, which it is, right? But I want to know why. Why, why, if as much as I can, right? So here's goal. Perfect trade. Why did this fail at VWAP this time? And another time, so say it's another day and it rips right through. Why? Most of the time it's because you get real time volume defending the area. So no matter what you're looking at, pretend this is a 200 day moving average, pretend that's a Fibonacci level. It doesn't matter. You come up with your thesis, then you wait for that area, and then you wait for confirming volume with book map, with the SI indicator to agree with your thesis. If you don't get the volume, you don't trade it. I don't. Right? Why do you want to be trading an area that you're not getting? You're not a big trader, right? You're not a three, four thousand lot trader. You're not gonna. You're not gonna control market movement. Don't you want the big money on your side in areas that you think are important? That's the whole idea, right? You come up with an idea, a thesis, or areas that you like. Then you wait for the big money to confirm your areas that your idea is right. Then you put on the trade fearlessly, right? So that's what I'm talking about. So I, this is probably, let's see what this is. I'm sure this was, was this my zone? I think it was, 1787.5. And what time was that? This was at, uh, 
740 my time on mound, so that's 840 central. <clears throat> For the, those of you following at home, it's still going to be 740 on this though. So let's see. This is going to be, I think this is going to be a perfect example. Let's see. Um, so that was right here. Nope, there's nothing there, which is fine. You know, well, you had this. Where is this? Oh, there's only 100. So again, if I was trading VWAP, I would not, I would not have taken that short, right? Yeah, it worked out. But how good of a trade is it if it comes up here? And this is, this has got me on a tangent. This is the, um, this is the Taz River, the point of control, which is kind of like that's what I was getting at with the. Um, I'll show you that here quickly in a second with the, um, the VWAP stuff. So this is kind of like the VWAP stuff, right? You got the high end, uh, the value area high, the point of control, and then the value area low, which is I don't even know where it's at on here. But um, the point is, how how much more confident would you be on the, on this move up to this area? The v, this is what VWAP was, and then point of control. If you saw a 400 iceberg defending that area, right? Instead of just hoping the area holds, you know, hey, I got help here. Awesome. This is, this is even better. And you control your risk. So you see where that iceberg came in. You can put your stop just above it based on the iceberg. Then you take, take the trade. If you don't see anything, you don't take the trade. There's always going to be spots that work out, right? I want I want to know that paper's behind my trade, that the big money's behind my trade or the dumb money. Another reason you could have traded this, if you got a big stop run, a dumb and dumber, and immediately failed. That's another reason. Meaning the dumb money puked, the retail trader puked. There was no big money to push it through. You know, there's no interest of putting pushing it through VWAP right now. Stops. You short it. Let's see what's going on here. Let's see what's going on here. All right, so this is definitely a threshold for stop runs. This area is just very hairy, right? Like and oh, ice. I don't necessarily need to take a trade here. I do want to see, I would love to see this be a stop and hold. What's a stop and hold? A stop and hold's the opposite of the dumb and dumber. Dumb and dumber is when the retail trader pukes like they're doing right now, which is over 600 contracts, 666. That's not that's not a good sign. Um, but it breaks, it holds the area. Then paper comes in and starts pushing it lower, right? So you, we'll draw, I'll just draw this zone here quickly. It's going to be in between now. It's going to be even more confusing for people. <laughs> But I'm going to make it a different color here. So let's see. That started here. So you want to always expand your chart so you get the oh, full nice. the full price area, right? Some stuff's going off in the bonds too. Um. All right. So you can see this. A lot of times with, um, I don't know why this happens, but it, you can start to see the selling come in before it starts to draw this. But, you know, as long as you know that, you can, you know the area, right? So you draw yeah, that. Yeah, that's just the update, uh, Scott. Um, you know, the, the best bid and offer updates later after the transactions. Um, okay. And the iceberg tracker, like, is, is updating after it. it, it, it it's, it's correct. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's how it always looks. I just, you know, came on the meds up. Um, I don't want to make that as thick, so we'll just... Save that, and then let's find the bottom of the zone. Stop run. So that was it there. And so this looks like a dumb and dumber right now. So if you were short and you held it through that whole whole way, you can be getting out of some here because I want to see as a short thesis, I want to see this hold meaning this zone holds and it moves lower. And that's not happening. It's turning into a dumb and dumber. Right? If I can pull this up, it, yep. But that, all this just happened right now? Wow, that's pretty volatile. Jeez, so this it, thing. It, it did pop up. You would have made, if you got long, you would have made almost five points and now it's right through it. Now this is going to get, this is getting interesting, guys. And Pew Ice. Again, you know, when you get, little little guys like this in the middle of huge iceberg areas you just got to be careful and this whole area is really important put it that way this thing's starting to fall apart now right. yeah we have the the london close here or european close here uh, just coming up 
mean, how many guys are just getting chopped to pieces in this area, right? So it's like, you know, I was one of them, but I, you know, at least I had a reason <laughs> to be chopped up. Like, this, I still think this is going to break, and I will get in this trade. Absorption. What I want to see, what I'm going to do here is because so much has transpired since all this stuff happened, right? It did hold the top of the zone, right? Remember, we were showing the first iceberg. Look where it held. It's hard to put on a trade though down here and and have a six. A, 15 point stop, obviously, right? So my point is a lot's gone on here. Um, I'm gonna make this a half size instead, but, because I still wanna be short if it breaks the zone, but what should happen here, if it does break the zone, you should see some huge stop runs, more ice, then you just, you have a brand new signal and you put that on. But you need to know in your mind, right? Even if you don't have a trade on, even if you don't take the first break of this area, just watch it. You know, Very nice. this is a huge, huge area you have all of the stuff that's tra transpired between the spot gamma level a little higher right so 38.99 all the way down to 38.82 so this 18 point range is imperative for the tone probably for the rest of the week this is just monster volume in this area right so whatever way this way breaks What's probably going to happen again is if it breaks here, it's probably going to do one of these. It'll retest and then it'll go. Again, it's hard to trade this this old stuff because we, are you going to risk 15 points on a trade on the E mini? I don't, I don't want to risk 15 points. So what you do is you just know the zone's important, right? Now you wait. When it comes down here, if this is legitimately going to break, you're going to see stuff firing off again, and then you take your trade and you can base your stops based on the new stuff that comes in, right? So even though I got beat up on this, this the story is not over. This game is not over. This is first quarter, right? That's fine. Beat me up, play your games because I know when this comes down here, especially when I get a new setup here, it's go time. Like this is if I get like a you know sell ice or a stop and hold, I'm in with as they used to say as we used to say as big traders with both hands, right? So this this is first quarter. Trust me, if this thing gets going, Very nice. It's gonna get up. Okay, so uh, we got a question for uh, Adam, or a question from Adam. This will be the last one, uh, guys. We've been, I've been answering your questions, and, and, and Scott has as well. So uh, we've just been going for about almost an hour and a half here. So we uh, we need to to wrap it up. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, how do you evaluate uh, the market has finally crossed the support resistance uh, that the trade is still on, um, uh, and that you are not measuring it to the tick very precisely? Um, and that you use some sort of common sense when evaluating this area, um, but how uh, is uh, Adam's question? So say that again. How do I what? Well, so um, going through uh, an, an area um, of support, cross support and resistance area, and uh -huh. knowing that the trade is still on, um, and then um, taking like you're using it, he's kind of. Uh, saying that you're using more common sense for understanding these zones and areas than some sort of like measured move well what i think he's asking is you know yeah it goes for anything right it goes for any area that you draw or your zones or whatever you're using you know if the market you know i'll, I'll draw my i'll have an important zone so you see all my zones on you know we'll start with the actual real zones that i draw right and actually there's a I'm probably gonna have a course on my website. I did a seminar. Um, we did a virtual uh, for We Trade Desk where I showed how I draw these zones. Um, I'm probably gonna have that on my website here soon, to, so people can understand and, because they're very powerful, right? But the, my, what I'm trying to get, get to get to here is, you know, if I have an important zone again, I haven't updated this one. Um, so this this was an important zone, right? You had buy tail, buy tail support, buy tail support, support, right? And we finally broke, it came in, resistance, resistance, right? So my point is, it's still pretty relevant and you see the buying tail through it the other day, right? So it's still relevant. But if you get a zone where it's like through, 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 you can delete the zone, right? So it's the same with same with the volume. Someone asked me this, I posted um, again on Twitter, look at it, I posted it on Tuesday night. I showed some iceberg areas and somebody asked me, well, when is it not relevant anymore? One is not relevant anymore. This is still relevant. This still held this whole area, right? So this whole thing is still relevant. When it's not relevant, is if it does one of these, it comes back and goes up here and then back through. Yeah, 
then then you just this is done that this doesn't matter right now it still matters because we're still technically on all the ice that's hit hit the book today right this we're still this looks tiny this 756 looks tiny compared to these but we're, we're still holding in this zone right so it's still relevant when i when i don't when I won't pay attention to it is if it does one of these and then it does one of these, you know, and then keeps going higher, then I'm done with it, right? But right now, this to here to here, again, I know it's a very large zone, but it is what it is. You can't can't just wish that wish away a big zone. And this is what I talk about. We trade desk guys all the time when we're building playbooks and I'm teaching them that stuff. You know, I had a guy the other day that, that I guarantee you probably 80% of the people on this webinar do the same thing, right? They are they have these these um, these static stop levels, right? So say they want to get short right here, they get short and they risk two points. Well, what, what, what is the two points? That two points means nothing. It means something in your mind. It means nothing to the market. Your stops have to be based on what's important to the market. Your stop, if you do get short, your stop needs to be up here above this zone. That's what's important. Your two, two point stop, the, the market doesn't care about your two point stop and you're most likely going to get stopped out. So you cannot base your stops on an uh, arbitrary number that you feel comfortable losing, right? So there, there's two ways to, to, to think about that, right? So again, a, a, just a two-point stop every time you put an order in, that's that's not smart. Trust Ooh, me, nice. that's not smart. You're, you're not gonna, you will get blown out of the game doing that. You need to base your stops on important levels, right? So a zone, or say you're trading, um, VWAP, so here's a euro, right? So you're trading VWAP. Now you say, now if it's an important area and you want to use a two two point stop, say this is a yes. Yeah, use a two point stop. So say you like to take the bounce off VWAP with this dip. You can use two points below that important area. That's different than putting a trade on right here and putting a two point stop in. You're just asking to get, you're going to get stopped out 98% of the time, right? I'm, hopefully I'm, I'm making, I'm clear on what I'm saying there. Like you, that that alone if you guys understand what i'm saying and start doing that and you start basing your stops based on structure it's going to change your whole trading game so what i was getting at here if you take any trades in this zone you basically if you want to get long you have to risk below here if you want to get short you have to risk above here period end of story if not you're going to get whipsawed out so if you're using a two-point stop a three-point stop it doesn't matter you, you you have to base your stops based on the structure or an important level that it needs to violate for you to be wrong, not because you only want to lose two points. Is that clear, Bruce? Am I being clear on that? It, it, yeah, I mean, that's just crystal clear. And, and it's so important to understand um, that, um, uh, you know, the, the, these zones like that, because um, uh, else, yeah, your your probability of getting stopped out is tremendously high. Right, exactly. Um, any other questions? Um, I think that wraps it up. Uh, I guess Michael's asking here, this will be the last, um, on your 60 minute chart, do you include the overnight uh, session? No, so 60 minutes, just uh, regular trading hours because that helps me see gaps. So gaps, so very, again, these zones are draw. I draw my zones, tops, of, tops and bottoms of balance areas, uh, important tails. Uh, the other thing you really want to pay attention to is Directional conviction. I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show one more thing in crude here, and we're because I think this is the end of the move here, uh, up move, and I'm gonna show you guys why. And this this leads into the directional conviction thing, right? So when you see um, high directional conviction, that area is very important on retests, right? So um, so like this would be, you know, something like this, high directional conviction. Uh, this is a tail and high directional connection. Wherever those moves started from is very important. It's going to be more clear when I show it. Should go them. But what I'm getting at, I have the 24-hour uh, chart. I mean, I'm sorry, I have the regular trading hour chart because it shows me gaps. Gaps are the same as directional conviction, right? So a, a gap where that started, that's important on a retest, right? This one yesterday went right through it. But um, the point is, gaps are like directional conviction. So I will end on. So we all know crude is just. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous like this is ballistic straight up ridiculousness right i mean it, we've gone from 35 ish 34 straight to 64 i mean straight, this is what you call directional conviction right this is on a weekly time frame but that's insanity right so as far as never pulling back so where could this possibly stop 
where is it most likely to stop? Well, right here. So I'm waiting, I've been waiting for two days now, going into yesterday for a bull, a bearish signal. You guys may be thinking, are you out of your mind? You're gonna, you're gonna short this thing? Why am I gonna short this thing? Let me fix this real quick, because I, I don't know why it does this every single time. Why is this area important? So this is a weekly chart. This is last July or um, January. This exact area, so the balance area, but this exact area is what started this entire move when we down to minus $38 in the futures, right? It doesn't even show it on here, but I can guarantee you there's some traders on here that uh, had some I mean, I, I know traders that had one loss on, I lost like 20 grand because it went negative. I'm not laughing at you. I'm just, it's just that ridiculous. But my point is, this is the exact point, the exact zone. You had directional conviction here. You had a selling tail here. Started this whole move down. This is a straight B line into a very important zone. I will short this with confidence if I get something today on here in this zone and starting to happen right now. Right. So, and what I like here too, this is a beeline move. So you can see this the longer term zone is drawn on my five minutes. So it looks much bigger, but we're basically beeline in straight directional conviction on a five minutes in a five minute sense, right into the zone. This, I mean, we know the zone so important from way back when. What's that also? This is a bounce area overnight that we broke down from. We retested, couldn't, couldn't get back above. That's what started the whole down move. Now we're back to what? The high volume note of this zone. We know this zone's important. If I start getting things, um, you know, big, big volume bearish setups, I will take a short and I will, and especially if you break down back through the zone again and I get them, I'm taking a short and this could be, we can start moving, you know, I'm talking dollar moves now, right? Because this is so due to pull back and this is the exact area that this thing's going to pull back on. Um, what do I do with the longer term chart here? Hold on one second. I'll just give you an idea of where we may. Move down to if this thing starts to sell off. All right, so you want to watch. You can use this for anything. I mean, Bitcoin, anything, right? I mean, if you're waiting for pullbacks in Bitcoin, you want to see where prior balance was was drawn, right? So this was basically one balance area here broke out from you had a little guy here and this is where this directional connection came from so if we do start selling off this is the probably the first place we're going to pause right probably around 6170 we get through this we got the top of this balance area you can see that's where this tail was put in the start of the move if we get through that the last stand for this area is not a volume node of this balance area if we break that there's not a lot i mean you got little guys here right that you got one here that but most likely down to the bigger one down here. So this could be a nice $10 pullback, right? Talk to me in about a week or two and let's see if I'm right. Now, that aside, again, this is what I'm talking about coming up with thesis, that's my thesis. Do I like a short right here? No, not, I mean, I don't love a short right here. Right now I know I, what I just said, but when you, you gotta also go down more in a smaller time frame. Why don't I like the short right in the exact, exactly right here? Well, because, we had a multi-hour balance area that we're breaking out from. I do not want to stand in the way of all these guys that were short, that were probably thinking the same thing as me, that have to puke their trade, right? When is this going to be a great short? If this zone fails, and this is a fail breakout of this current balance area, and we break through the high volume note, then I start getting um, SI indicator setups. I will short this with glee, right? Here, I, I, so I take that back because I forgot about this zone. I was telling you I want to short right now. I might take something. If I see some huge ice like we've been seeing in ES, I may take something small. But I know just like when I took the ES trade earlier, you have to know, you know, again, this comes with experience. Okay, I know what I'm getting myself into. If I try to take a short right here, I know I'm standing in the way of guys that are puking out of this balance area, right? Am I willing to give it a shot if I see a big real-time volume setup? Absolutely, because I know the bigger picture, how big this, how important this zone is. If this fails, and this is a fail breakout on top of failing at this zone, I cannot wait to short it, right? So just keep that in mind. If this fails, you, we'll see in about a week. If this if this breakout fails and we get below this little balance area, let's talk in the next webinar and uh, see where we're at. I'm gonna say we're gonna be much lower. 
And then I, I think next webinar, we'll talk about this um, this new indicator here. I didn't have time to get into it. Plus I need to wide one in Washington for two days, this icebergs tracker. It's showing you more. It just helps you with exact price points, maybe within a, um, a iceberg, kind of like this one fired off. You know the exact point where the most volume fired off, the exact price, I should say, right? So that was 63.60, and we're holding above right now. So I, again, I, you know, if something fires off huge, I may take a short. I'm not loving it, but if we break that balance area that I just showed you, I am going to be shorting with cool stocks. Yeah, yeah, just so. just a, a quick note on that that. It's in beta. I, a lot of people have been um, asking about it. And, you know, it's going to change, uh, guys. So, I mean, it is beta, um, and guys are just kind of playing around with it and getting feedback and testing it. Um, but uh, the details are there's a lot more details on that new uh, iceberg uh, uh, indicator. It it'll show you when it was um, uh, detected, uh, how much well how much traded, uh, if it was canceled or moved, also the same one that can be moved to a different price level, or, or if it was completely executed. So you'll you'll know all of these details, which is a pretty, pretty amazing uh, level of transparency. Um, you know, it, it'll be out pretty soon. I just got, you know, we'll, we'll let you guys know about all that. Um, but um, uh, no no more questions, uh, Scott. So, uh, uh, you know, it looks like, uh, oh, it looks like you got filled there. Yeah, I got, so it's still not doing anything yet, but trust me, this is, this is going to get interesting now. So I short, I got into half position here. I, you know, my stop's going to go back above here. It's a large stop. I understand that. But now I'm looking for something new. If something new starts to come in, not, then it's go time. Then these guys are all in big, 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 big trouble, especially because I couldn't get it up here. They're they're done. How many times can they push it back in here and, and beat? I'm telling you, if you get something now, I'm shortening and I'm looking at liquidity level first to cover maybe a couple, then I'm really looking at the spot gamma levels. So just be ready. This is below this area, guys. This is what we're waiting for all day. And that's why I tried to short the first two times. Again, this right here is first quarter. This game is not over, trust me. All, all right. right. Excellent. It. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, uh, guys, uh, Scott has been very generous, uh, uh, as always, with his time here. So it's uh, an, an over an hour and 40 minutes or so. Uh, so uh, thank you very much, Scott. Uh, and uh, we'll catch up with you uh, next Thursday. Great. Appreciate it. Hopefully uh, I was not as confusing as we had on the webinar. There was just a lot going on. But guys, just remember, you know, this is still one of these, if you see this move down here, say it collects this, hits this liquidity, bounces, just watch for a return. And then if it fails again, you may not get it, but the conservative way to short this is wait for it to move away, retest one more time, then you can short it. And these are the areas that you want to be watching. If it breaks this, adios. And just look for, wait for your real-time volume, right? If it comes down to this stuff here and you see nothing, you hear nothing, you probably want to cover most of your position. If you start seeing bearish stuff, then you want to add. If you see something bullish, then you know, hey, this move may be over right now. I'll get out of my trade and I'll wait. But if this breaks this with something bearish, this my point is let the volume confirm your area, always, to the end of time. If You guys, if you're not using volume in trading, you do not have all the pieces of the puzzle, period. And the story, you don't, you don't have all the information. I don't care how well you're doing. I say this every time I'm on. You can be doing 10 times better if you understand real-time volume and the areas to watch um, in your trading because the SI indicator and book map which are the greatest things I've ever seen in futures trading, period, any trading. All right. All right. Thank you, Scott. And uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, we'll have uh, Spot Gamma on tomorrow. He'll wrap up the uh, Pro Trader webinar series, 10 a.m. Uh, and... Um, uh, you can catch up on uh, all of recordings. They're, they'll be in the uh, Bookmap Pro, Tra Pro Trader webinar um, uh, uh, playlist on our YouTube channel. And for reaching out to Scott, and if you have any interest, um, his courses, uh, deals from Scott, uh, his Twitter, all, all that co uh, content or contact information is in the chat. I put it in there periodically for you guys so that uh, if you came in late, you still get it there. Uh, thanks for coming, everybody, and we'll catch up tomorrow. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, guys. See you next week. Appreciate it.